All right, folks, I'm just pulling away from the shore here now. And we'll be on our way down through the narrow channels. It's been raining just real light this morning. There's some occasional sunshine through the clouds, which is encouraging. We'll see if that's if it opens up a little bit more and I can get the solar back up to 100% today. It'd be really nice if I could. I've got uh, several days of rain ahead of me. All right. Right now it's, you know, it's just cloudy, but it's not a bad day. The country is always so beautiful. It's even when it's raining, it's a, a nice place to be. So I got about a three quarters of a mile across this Bay Blue, they call it, and then the narrow uh, passageway. I'm not going to go too fast today because I want to try to charge up the system pretty good. The house battery is getting pretty low. It's down to about 11.8. That's too low. So I'd like to get that up above 12. 12, 2, 3, 4, somewhere in there. I don't know if that's possible with the short trip, but we'll see. It's only got a little 15 amp charger, so I'm going to look into seeing if I can't get a larger one. Yeah, we're about 2,500 RPM, doing about 6.4 miles per hour. Cliffside right there, typical of this country. All of Tamagami has a lot of that. That's what makes it interesting and fun. I had cereal this morning, some granola, peanut butter and toast, some orange juice. And of course that was after coffee and cookies. I usually have coffee and cookies when I do my morning study and some reading and prayer time. So we're a little bit, uh, well, it's about 10 o'clock Eastern. That's about when I usually get going. And it was just really fortunate the rain stopped right when I went to pull the panels down and get t untied. It's always nice not to have to wear my rain jacket when I do that. Anyway, I think I'll sign off for now. We'll rejoin with you later as we get down the lake further. folks I'm washing dishes so what I use the big pot for here is to heat up water for washing so right now it's getting warmed up I usually get it so it's I can barely put my fingers in there because when you put it in the sink and all the other containers here that rinse and the soap it tends to get cool off real fast so especially when you're washing a cold mug like this for coffee so I end up trying to uh, heat this up really good I thought we were going to be pretty close already, but uh, it's not. I use about uh, a gallon or so of water to wash with. I split it halfway between the soap and the rinse. I carry uh, five on this trip. It's uh, 18 days on the water, so I carry uh, a little bit more than I need, about 20 gallons. So I've got uh, five four-gallon jugs. And I think I've been through three. I've got two remaining, so I've got plenty of water. And I measure it each day. I have a spot on the container here that I know what I can use. And so I know exactly how much water I'm going to use for the whole trip. Because I have to carry wash water with me. You can, uh, I rinse in the water from the lake, but I don't finish washing with that. So, And I don't have any purifier or filtration system on the boat yet. I might do that sometime in the future, but... Currently, I don't. I have one that I used to use on my sailboat that I could install, but I'm not sure where I'd put it because I'm running out of space on this boat. That's something that's a future project if I'm going to do that. Check our water here. Getting close. I can still hold my fingers in there so it's not quite hot enough. And then I've got the sink here and the uh, countertop that is for washing, my rinse container, and then my drying rack. I don't dry any dishes, I let them air dry. Uh, sometimes if I hurry it up, I, I may use a dry to drying towel a little bit, but for the most part, I let them air dry. And I do dishes once a day. 
usually after I move, as soon as I arrive at the new site, then that's when I'll wash. Or somewhere around 11 to 1 o'clock, depending on where I'm at and what I'm doing. Uh, if I'm going out and hiking or doing other activities, sometimes I'll wait until I get back. Because I can wash when it's raining out, but I can't hike and kayak when it's raining out. So I tend to look at that as to when I'm going to do dishes. Dishes are not a high priority. So, All right, I think we're good enough on this. So I'll start pouring the water into our soapy water that's already been put in there, the soap. I just give it one squirt of Dove dishwashing fluid, or soap, I should say. And I can see the old ring on the, this, so I know about how much water to put in each container. That's the jug that I heat water in it. I don't, uh, I only use, like I say, about a gallon. So it's pretty straightforward. Put the silverware in there to let it soak really good because that's, uh, if you were gonna get something from the water, a Giardia or things like that, it would be a lot more likely from silverware or cups. So I let it be, try to get that in the really hot water to start off with. I don't have too many dishes today, so it won't take me very long. Very little silverware. I had pizza last night, and pizza doesn't generate a bunch of dishes like a lot of the other stuff that I do. I think the worst one is uh, probably when I do an omelet. I do omelets, but on this trip, it's about a three week trip, so I'm doing omelets on three days. Pancakes, I guess, are also generate a little more dishes mainly because you're mixing stuff and so you have mixing spoons and things like that. But I consistently use the same amount of water regardless. You could probably use a little more water on those days where you got more dishes, but then the problem is you start losing your measurements and you don't know what you've got remaining. So, I mean, you have a rough idea, but it's better just to use the same amount of water every day. That way you know exactly where you're at and uh, you don't run out. So far I've never run out of water on any trip. Most trips I just take four four gallon jugs but this is a longer trip so on this one I took five an extra one. Figured I'd be too short I'd be short a little bit on the if I just took the uh, four four that I usually do. So this trip I should be plenty in good shape and this rack I've got a metal rack here that's over my heating unit a propane stove and fortunately I can still wash with this I can't use this pan because of the fact that it's too close to the pipe but the rack can stay on there and I, as long as I keep the towel off the pipe and the heat isn't you know and I'm not generating a lot too much heat then I just put my wash dish pan down here where the rinse water is and that way I don't have to I can even if I need heat I can be running a little bit amount of heat. Sometimes, like a couple days ago, it was cold enough. Got down in the 30s at night. In the morning, in, in that day when I had to wash dishes, I had some heat on because it just was too cold to work. And there's no sense freezing when you got a, a heater. I used it that day. But you do have to think a little bit logically on where you're gonna put the, uh, what you can do and what you can't do so you don't burn anything. But anyway, the, what I started to say is that my friend Gary gave me the suggestion to put in this grate and it allows the heat to come up without, uh, but yet I can still use it as counter space for what I'm doing right now, like washing dishes. An excellent idea and it's worked out perfect. This is the bottom part of my oven and uh, the top, there's a cover that goes on top with a temperature gauge and I'll show that I'm going to try to do, I think I'm doing uh, coffee cake in a, a day or two here again and I'll film that so you can see how I use that oven and and, ba and do baking tabletop, um, stovetop oven I should say. Works great. I prefer to have a built-in oven but there's just, uh, to do that means you'd have to take out one of your counter or uh, cabinets here under the counter and that just doesn't make sense so a few times that I bake it's really not necessary. There you go that's how I wash dishes just let that air dry and then I use this pan on the floor here to put the dirty dishes in I let them soak out on the aft deck overnight that way they're ready to go to wash the next day. Talk to you later. All right folks here I am uh, filling a water jug this actually is about empty so I just need to empty the the last of the water out of this. 
and then bring up another jug out of the bilge or the aft compartment here. I'll show you that where that is in a minute. But this is the four gallon jugs. These will just fit adequately underneath the uh, aft deck. I can get at least five. I, I haven't tried, but I think we could probably get a sixth one under there. But I don't think I'll ever go on a trip that long where I need that many. And since these are riding down below, I take these, uh, make sure these are tight. And then I'll uh, take the spot off. And then I can, you can see I have some duct tape there on the top of the jug. I use that to seal the hole so bugs and stuff don't crawl into that hole. Because they will find places to nest if they, spiders, things like that. I haven't had a problem with that, but I don't want to have a problem with that either. So put this strip of duct tape on the top and that seals it. Now I'm going to show you uh, how I get the jugs out in the aft compartment here. So I'll lower the camera a little bit so you can see the camera or the compartment. I'm going to store these extra bottles. They're empty, so I'm just going to put them down there to get them out of the way. But this comes up like that. And then there's a compartment here in the floor. You can see that lifts out. And this is uh, some beer and other drinks. I put these empty boxes and things down here just to get them out of the way. But right now I need more water. So the goal is to get some of that out of here. But in the meantime, I might as well put where that other jug go. I knocked it out here. Put that down there and get that out of the way. I think this is a full jug here, yeah. And then I have my two batteries. This is the house, this is the starting battery. So they fit in there just real nice. Right now I've also got my garbage from the first uh, couple of weeks in here to keep them from, again, from critters getting into them. If a mouse, I had a mouse on board and I don't want him digging in the garbage in the bills. That'd be a bad thing. So I put it in that container and that secures it pretty well. Forgot, you got to put the empty back. Start over again here. Got ahead of myself. You can probably see that there's some wetness down there it rained <clears throat> last night and this is not watertight so it's meant to drain into the bilge and uh, so it does and it tends to get a little damp down there <clears throat> so there we go we got our jug of water for the next time we'll go ahead and fill the jug the rest of the way for tomorrow's water I don't do that in advance usually but since I just emptied the jug I'll do it today that way I'm, it'll be ready to go when I want to wash tomorrow and it's supposed to rain some more here in the next couple of days. So that jug was open. I don't know if I did that myself or... Yeah, we got about a half a gallon we need yet. This is a little folding table that I use. Got it off Amazon. It's been real handy. Folds and travels very easily. So it's... A, and it's not... doesn't take up that much space, which is a good thing. And underneath is my hot water shower. The pump and things there... I use that along with this big pail. That's my shower pail uh, when I want to shower. And it's rigged up on this post. So it sets right here when I'm showering. Anyway, there you go. That's what that process of getting in and out of the aft deck. All right, folks, I'm going to go out and walk around the, the site here on the end of the southwest arm. So we'll uh, walk out and take a look around. One thing that's different about this site is there's a sign here that says there's a box privy. Uh, I've been on two sites now that have them so it's not new but it is unique to this site. There's also a fireplace. There's two fireplaces on this end so it's obviously set up for group camps where there's a bunch of canoeists coming through. So we'll walk over here is the other fireplace. There's some wood around that could have a fire if it was going to be more pleasant, but and right now it actually isn't too bad. So I don't know, I maybe have to reconsider. I decided I didn't think I was going to do it, but uh, anyway, you're looking kind of generally northeast. And don't ask me what that thing there, it looks like somebody came in on a snowmobile and ended up leaving their trash here. It's very disappointing that people do that, but that's what happens. Looks like it was broken and so they just left it. I'm just going to spend one night here. As you can see, there's lots of clouds. Earlier today, there was quite a bit of rain. 
Then it kind of broke up, but it was a little bit more mild. And I thought I could even get some solar energy and maybe get back up to 100%. Well, no. <laughs> as soon as I got where I could set up the panels, as you see right now, the panels are up. As soon as I got those set up, then the, cloud, the clouds uh, thickened up and that was the end of that. So disappointing. Decent sight. Kind of a narrow little peninsula. You can see water on that side and then water on this side. Again, this is the farthest campsite or boat site on the southwest arm as you go southwest. If you go to the end of the arm, this is the only, the last site. Decent spot, but it's a little bit exposed. If the wind came up strong from the northeast, I wouldn't want to be here. I chose to go here because the site was going to be, or the winds were going to be generally light tonight. Do we have a fire or not? I, I think we have to decide if I can find enough firewood to even begin to have a fire. And if the wind would calm down, especially with a fire, it would be reasonable to sit outside and enjoy. There's a little bit of wood here, partially burned wood. Now, the reason it's probably partially burned is it's not very good wood. At least it's something, and it is dried out a little bit from the burning. So I walked down to the other end here, and uh, there's also a few pieces there I could probably cut up. The reality is if I was going to have a fire, I really need to cut some firewood and split it. I'm not sure I can see anything that's around here that would be ready to be cut. Right there is a dead tree hanging up there. That could be cut, I suppose. So let's walk down here a little bit. It looks like they had an old one here. You can see that, or at least the box is there. It looks like it isn't connected up to anything, but the real one is right here. Looks like you need to get a step ladder to get up to that one. <laughs> Pretty high. Lots of wood. I'm not seeing a lot of the piece that I showed here. It looks to me like they already had cut pieces off of that. You can see it's just hung up there in the woods. I could limit and cut off a few more pieces, but I wonder how good it is. Anyway, that's the story. I'm not overly enthusiastic about setting out tonight because of the dreary weather. Maybe I should change my attitude. I don't know. <laughs> I'm a little bit tired of the cloudy and rainy weather that I've had, which has been the majority of this trip. I've had one reasonably sunny day. The rest have been partial days. I think I've had a total of three that have had any sun. And like I say, one of them was pretty much all day. So there's the old ship, just finished dinner, trying to decide what to do for this evening. The wind has dropped. It's actually fairly pleasant up here. Hate to west, waste a, a night like this to not have a fire, but man, I don't know if I want to go cut firewood. If there was something handy, I would do that. The only piece I saw was that one hung up in the woods there. There's a couple of pieces down this way that I could use. So we'll see, we'll ponder that, get back to you. All right, folks, I decided to use the fire ring. That way I didn't have to cut any firewood and if it starts raining, I can run for cover and set out here and enjoy the evening anyway. So that's what we're doing. It's not raining. The wind has dropped uh, probably less than five miles an hour. So it's comfortable, even though it's in the 50s, mid 50s temperature wise. With the down vest and the fire, I'm pretty, pretty comfortable, so. Anyway, that's what we're going to do this evening on my little kit here. I've got my after dinner wine and I'll just sip on this and enjoy. Probably turn on some music in a bit here. Mm -hmm. 